there's a very important question um, in my view um, and it's the question that we're all trying to to answer which is what does ethics mean in practice how do we translate a lot of the work that we've been doing over the last few years into practice so when we look at what's been happening over the last few years in the ethics debate space which has been a thriving debate um, it's been a very important one uh, but we're certainly at a time in 2020 where we do need to make real steps and the real steps are necessary because of what we've seen happening over the last few months and what we've seen happening um, in in, uh, in recent times. And what we're seeing in front of our eyes is, first of all, is the um, use of technology as a real um, as a real political value. And we've seen this particularly around surveillance wrapped around the mo most vulnerable. We've seen around um, the use of algorithms um, that have now um, become sort of dominant means of organizing, governing people um, as increasingly the choices, the freedoms, um, the ambitions, the aspirations of individuals are constantly mediated, um, governed and guided and even restricted by algorithms. Um, so we've seen the sort of increased use of, of, of algorithms, of big data patterns, data analytics, um, and we, we've seen um, the role that big data and, and micro-targeting um, behavioural analytics really play in, in, in constructing a reality for individuals, thus really um, softening out not just us as people, um, but also softening out democracy because um, by being exposed to different things, we lose the sense of common understanding of, of the world that is essential um, to, to, to democracy. So over the last few years, what we've really seen is the real impact of unfettered use of technology. And we've seen the reality of, of a, um, a digital space that has grown a little bit too too wild and some technology has come to help so I'm thinking of the general data protection regulation in the US we have seen CCPA and Brazil a new regulation has just been law has just been approved a couple of days ago and um, in across the world in India um, in, and we've seen change happening in, in relation to, to data privacy but it's beyond data privacy it's really um, looking at competition law it's really looking at this, how do we um, lead, um, how do we make the digital ecosystem work um, uh, better for everybody and how do we make sure that the dividends of the digital ecosystem are distributed more fairly um, among people so we've had a lot of discussions about this and we've really seen um, the impact of, of technology and what I think people are starting to realize now is that technology is not neutral, that every piece of technology, every technological artifact is a product of choices and is a product of data. And choices are never neutral because there are some people making those choices. And, the, and data uh, is never neutral because the data is, is, is a picture of the world as it is, of the social constructions, of the social inequality, of the racism that exists in society. Of, of, and even the choice of collecting data is a, is a political choice to, to elevate some people um, to to um, materials to be in in a database, so um, the there is this reckoning I think that people are having, um, and um, I think what is really important is there's you know despite so much talking over the last few years, um, nothing really really changed and what um, global movements like Black Lives Matter have shown to the world is is really this this sort of um, that um, that uh, we can't really talk about fairness in technology without talking about 
justice and without talking about the wider and bigger issues because technology um, is absolutely um, not neutral. And the work that some really important people have done across the world that I'm talking about Rio Benjamin and I'm talking about in particular um, Joy Bonambini and, and others with Gender Shades where they've really shown to the world that yes, there is a problem with men, with, with um, machine learning, there is a problem with AI, and there is a problem around fairness. But um, we, algorithmic fairness is something very, very different from justice and algorithmic justice, which is which is really about and social justice, which is really about the the um, the. Um, uh, the society and how we create a, a better and fairer society. So I think the big change in, in, in ethics over the last few years is really been, actually over the last few months, is really been uh, around understanding the, um, um, the technology does not sit in isolation. And I think people are now seeing this firsthand. So when we talk about um, translating ethics into practice is really that understanding that yes you have the law yes you have compliance yes you have the technical tools to um, the, the, the very important technical tools to um, for example um, manipulate and work on data sets so they they, they are better suited um, and they um, help reduce the bias that could emerge or we have um, governance and principles and and um, um, a data ethics board and and you know we could have all that but there is also a preliminary step which is around what technology is for and the understanding that if we want to talk about ethics of AI we need to ask ourselves the big question and the big question is do we need this technological product do we how do we design it in a way which is inclusive and who is this technological product here to serve? Is it here to perpetuate the inequalities or is it here to liberate individuals? And who is going to make that assessment? Um, and who is going to make that decisions? Who is going to say, yes, this is a technological product that we want? And so when we talk AI ethics, the real practical way to enable it, in my way, in, in my opinion, is to stop for a moment and understanding that because something is technologically possible doesn't mean that it necessarily has to be done and and it, this is really crucial because you can have the best and the most perfect product ever we can for example have facial recognition that doesn't fail to recognize black people um, because we address the problem of mathematical and algorithmic fairness within the system but still the deployment of facial recognition would still be wrapped around the more vulnerable. And still, we would need a discussion as to whether we do really want to be watched and surveilled. So even the most um, fair product from a technological perspective may still be a product that ends up doing something that we as a society are not prepared to accept. So. When we're asked um, what does fairness mean, what does um, ethics mean in practice, it means to really look at, as an organisation, as a company, uh, what tools need to be established and what participatory mechanism need to be established and what values we are there to safeguard in order to make a decision whether or not we want a specific product. And this is really, really important because we can then move on to all the other more mathematical and algorithmic aspects and or really into the understanding of the data sets. But without the preliminary and most important element of all, then ethics becomes just a buzzword. And in my day job with organisations, this is what I try and do. And this is really important for companies, not just because organisations and individuals, they know the trust matters and trust does matter when organisations can demonstrate that they've taken into account the values and the common good of our society. And when they do develop and they do deploy a technological product, they do so because they've um, 
gone through a process of understanding whether the technological product is something that ought to be deployed and developed in the same place in the first place so to me this is what ethics in practice really means and i think it's taken a while for us to get there um and i think what has been happening over the last few months and what we're witnessing and global scale around the politics and geopolitics of data or technology is really um serving our, as as a um reckoning and moment for everybody so ethics to me is really look at what is technology for and the challenge that we all have is to ensure that um, all voices are heard in this debate and technology doesn't become a political mean to perpetuate injustice and inequality ethics to me is really all about that